Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Vibhor. I'm the co-founder of co-founder and CEO of Fori. Uh, Fori is actually derived from Fourier. Uh, so what we are building is a AI-based platform that can help you localize and dub your content into multiple languages. So for my talk, uh, the topic is towards emotive speech synthesis. So as we know that uh, uh, whenever any AI voice is generated right now, it's very much mechanical. So how can we make it more emotive? So there are some voices that we like. Let's hear Amitabh Bachchan. Parampara. Pratishtha. Anushasana. Right, uh, some instant connection uh, with this particular voice. Then we have Morgan Freeman. Where are, where are those of us who like to venture to the unexplored, to see the beauty and the strange? Awesome. And then we have our favorite, Arijit Singh. <laughs> Great. Uh, so then uh, we wanted to make our own voices. So we started making the voices. So this is a generation one of the voice. Uh, so I, it would hurt actually. So the volume can be a bit down. Right, so if you remember, uh, 90s kids would remember these kind of voices, the robotic sounds coming in. Then uh, we moved to the generation two, uh, which was much more human-like. Hello, my name is Sam. Right, so now the relatability factor increased, but the voice is still a bit mechanical. Then we have the generation three of voices. Um, Hello, my name is Sam. So there were like certain pauses in there. The voice was much more better, much more clear in this particular thing. So, so uh, let's talk about a speech first then. Uh, what exactly is in a speech? You have characters, basically A's and B's and C's, uh, ka, ka, ga, ga, right? The combination of these uh, basically creates phonemes. So phonemes is something like uh, when we speak, there's a, spe a specific way everything is... Uh, spoken out. So we have 26 alf uh, characters in uh, English. We have 44 phonemes. So like uh, when we are saying dog, the is basically one uh, type of phoneme there. And when we are speaking something out, there's a spectrogram. This is basically how our speech uh, looks like. So uh, can we view speech? Yes. So there's one simple way, uh, a digital signal that we have been seeing uh, throughout. Uh, it shows you uh, the complete timeline. You have the sampling rate within the uh, signal itself and you get the amplitude. So you get a very basic information around uh, any form of a speech in a digital signal itself. But then there is a spectrogram, right? It gives you the complete specification about uh, uh, the speech. So you have the timeline. On the uh, y-axis, you can see the frequency. And uh, the colorful things means, this is black and white because I had to show it like that only. So uh, those... Uh, Curves which you are seeing uh, denotes the pitch at a particular frequency at a particular time, right? And this basically forms uh, your speech. With this spectrogram, you can get all the things which are there in digital signal, like the amplitude, you sum up certain things and you get the amplitude and all those uh, particular features as well. So voices can be beautiful. Uh, means I find this voice very beautiful. It's Morgan Freeman's voice. Um, you see that uh, there are like, Certain pauses, uh, the black parts of certain pauses are there. Then if you see uh, different curves, uh, uh, something like here, here. So this is how basically a sound would basically look like. And then it can be as bland, the one which I showed you, right? Everything is very much a static. It's just going straight and there is no, uh, no beauty in this particular spectrogram. So speech synthesis, so uh, what is speech synthesis? What do you need to do in a speech synthesis? It's something around voice cloning. Can we clone a particular person's voice? 
and uh, can we make those voices more emotional in nature and if it is multilingual it's even better right that if i can talk in uh, from english to hindi to tamil to french to spanish it would be amazing but just because we can doesn't mean that we need to right so uh, but why we need this kind of a technology so uh, first is if you can clone a person's voice you can actually maintain the actor's voice so the relatability factor would again be very much higher so let's take an example of bahubali right so prabhas shouting that okay that he wants to take revenge or something like that then if it is in hindi in his particular voice then the relatability factor is in, uh, increased preserve voice we can actually preserve our loved one voices it has a emotional uh, question to it people get uh, some form of stability when they are when they hear their own people's voice global audience you uh, when you are going multilingual you can actually reach out to much much wider audience uh, much uh, people who don't speak your language but can actually relate to your content and then increased engagement so uh, more people can actually talk to you can tell you that okay what they are doing the exchange of ideas increases and all this results in a very much connected world right so that is why speech synthesis with all those particular voice cloning emotional speech multilingual is uh, something that we need to work on so history and present so the first one um when we started back in 90s and 2000 it was a very phoneme based approach uh, so why those voices were very much mechanical because we were sticking all those phonemes those 44 ca- phonemes together and putting it in a particular voice and so that is why it was sounding very much mechanical very much robotic actually that robotic thing also came because we the algorithm was developed by, like that then came uh, tacatron 2 tacatron 2 was a paper by google it was a i believe it's a, a game changer uh, by google here that uh, actually talked about how you can make voices sound more human like post that a lot of work has been uh, done means uh, there is hifi again it's around something around voice cloning then you have wits fast speech and very recently open voice is also uh, released and there are many many more actually in every two weeks we are getting some or the other thing related to text to speech so uh, what exactly are we training on you have a speech so you have to collect a lot of speech data to actually train your models you need text you need text in which the speech is uh, speech is set and then you need phonemes of that particular text all these when combined can actually be used to train any deep learning model or a machine learning model to actually give a voice in a particular tone or in a particular emotion so this is what tacatron 2 architecture look like so you had input text you had character embeddings there are a lot of lstms and cnns which are working out but it is always about attention right so do you have information about what was happened what is going to happen those kind of things if it is there it helps you create something which is more, much more meaningful in nature and this is how uh, google was able to create something which was much more human like uh, not very emotive but something which was very human like so what was the result of it so this is uh, shahrukh khan's voice so you will hear a lot of srk from my end because big fan uh, so this is what his voice sounded like प्यार दोस्ती है अगर वो मेरी सबसे अच्छी दोस्त नहीं बन सकती राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट हिज वॉइस वाज लाइक बट नाउ इफ वी डू द एआई वॉइस व्हिच वाज डेवलप्ड विद टैकेटॉन 2 इट साउंड समथिंग लाइक दिस प्यार दोस्ती है अगर वो मेरी सबसे अच्छी दोस्त नहीं बन सकती राइट नो रिलेटेबिलिटी फैक्टर देयर इज नो इमोशन इन दिस सो यू वोंट एंजॉय दिस काइंड ऑफ अ साउंड so this is where the next type of concept started coming in can we clone a person's voice can we actually uh copy the intonations which a particular person has and can we clone their voice and then it sounds more like them can we have a particular kind of pauses so this is uh one of the architecture from hifi again so what it takes as input is a lot of speech in a mel spectrogram format uh so uh, i'm assuming here that uh, everyone is aware about mel spectrogram it's a, a specific type of a spectrogram uh, which uh, basically on the x axis is your uh, time your y axis is uh, your frequency and the colors which you are able to see is power or pitch at that particular frequency and time right so you get a lot of data from particular person 
you train it on your model, you show that, okay, this is how a particular speech looks like for this particular person. So you have a generator, and then once the model is particularly trained, then if you write any particular speech, it will come out in their particular voice. Right, so, uh, so uh, how a cloned voice would sound like. So this is uh, original Morgan Freeman. There are those of us who like to venture to the unexplored, to see the beauty and the strange. Right, so now, uh, can we clone Morgan Freeman's voice? So it sounds something like... There are those of us who like to venture into unexplored. Right, so uh, it sounds much more like him, and the expression itself is a bit more copied that when the pauses were there, when um, the specific changes were there. So if you look at the spectrogram as well for this, the, uh, uh, these, this is something called a spectral roll-off. So uh, those things are also changing means when there was a high, then there was a low, right? So this is how the modulations in the sound is actually happening. So this is uh, what can be achieved uh, with uh, cloned voice right now. But uh, going multilingual, Let's say I have some content in English and then I can produce it in English. That would be something which is amazing, right? Means, and in the source speaker's voice, that would be amazing. So this is uh, what SRK's spectrogram looks like. And this is the spectrogram, what the English AI generated voice uh, looks like. Again, if you uh, look closely on the generated one, now it is much more... Uh, uh, I would say beautiful. It has certain kind of curves which are there, uh, which re represents emotion. It has different kind of uh, power at different frequencies, which can actually be more relatable to the people. So uh, let's see a video then. So uh, it's from a very uh, popular movie, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. Pyaar. प्यार दोस्ती है अगर वो मेरी सबसे अच्छी दोस्त नहीं बन सकती तो मैं उससे कभी प्यार कर ही नहीं सकता क्योंकि दोस्ती बिना तो प्यार होता ही नहीं सिंपल प्यार दोस्ती लव लव इज फ्रेंडशिप इफ शी कैन नॉट बिकम माई बेस्ट फ्रेंड देन आई कैंट लव हर because love cannot happen without friendship simple love is friendship right um so what we did here uh, we actually cloned srk's voice uh, from hindi and cloned it for english so uh, the model which we are talking about here is something where we actually can clone a person's voice in from any language to english uh, what i wanted to show was from any language to hindi but uh, it is still in the making on our uh, gpus right now might take uh, nearly 10 days more so uh, uh, so that is uh, ongoing, but yeah. So the idea is, can you do uh, from any language to a particular language? So suppose uh, if we had content in Portuguese, let's take an example of that. And we give it to our model, it's a zero shot learning there. And we can clone that person's voice in that particular, from that particular language to English. And with the same kind of emotion. So if you heard, of, heard in this thing, the pauses which he took, the way he said, it was actually replicated. So, uh, but it's a single speaker thing, right? Means there is always limitations. So let's try uh, uh, with few more characters. So this is a trailer uh, from the movie Donkey, which is uh, recently released. Again, SRK references. I'm really sorry about that. When the story started in 1995, when I had a dream in Lalto, where I found four duffers who wanted to go to London. You can increase the length, do it. Why are you showing me such big sizes? I wear small size. Auntie, it is for your legs, not your fingers. Right, uh, so yeah, uh, so what we did here that uh, there were like multiple speakers here and with the same kind of intonations, these like, uh, you want uh, the pajama for your, uh, uh, for your legs, not your fingers, right? It means it was said in a particular tone and we were able to replicate that particular tone. So the idea is that with this kind of technology, what we can achieve is 
distributing content in multiple languages in multiple regions with the same type of emotions so the connectivity factor becomes more and more and more so uh, yeah uh, so yeah that's it that is it from my end uh, happy to take any questions Yeah. Uh, thanks, Vibhor. Uh, another question from Vibhor, uh, fellow Vibhor. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, two questions packaged in one. Yeah. Uh, the first thing uh, you mentioned how, uh, like, uh, the the last part of the uh, video where, uh, like, uh, the person was showing sarees and yes, they were talking about uh, like you know, but you you showed the uh, English translation as well. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that the intonation is such. Uh, which was probably there in the original as well. Yes. Now I understand and uh, like uh, I believe that uh, uh, most of the Indians and like uh, even the native speakers they speak their native language in a certain intonation. Yeah. And they might carry over some of that uh, when they talk uh, like uh, when they talk in another language. But it is very much possible that they have a certain uh, type of intonation in that particular language as well. Yeah. So uh, like uh, when I talk uh, talk in English, I probably have a different set of intonation yeah. which I have probably learned along the way. Yeah. So uh, when you actually do the translation, is it uh, like uh, the intonation is carried over? as it is in the original language or is it like you also train on the intonation a person could have in the another language okay. yeah i'll uh, ask it, the second question later yeah so it's basically uh, very interesting right uh, uh, it's a very valid thing that uh, whenever you are translating are you maintaining the same emotion and is it actually colloquial or not that uh, let's say a person in india can relate to that kind of english but person with, uh, let's say in us might not be able to relate to that particular uh, way of saying so this is where uh, i would say uh, these all things are assistive technologies and not replacing technologies so uh, here you have linguist now they are enabled to do certain task uh, when uh, they are actually translating if the target audience is indian uh, indian folks who understand english they have to translate in a particular manner they have to use certain form of uh, slangs uh, certain form of speech right but when you are doing us it might be that uh, in india let's say you uh, say something like damn on the other hand uh, in us you might use some curse word right so they have to change it accordingly so that particular uh, feeling is retained that is number one second is what we are doing here is that we are actually maintaining the source emotion that uh, if the actor is saying in a particular manner it is exactly set out in that particular manner only but now uh the idea is with our release what we are doing is that we will we are giving the option to the user that if they want to change it they can simply record okay say it like this particular manner but maintain the uh, speaker's voice so they can just simply record it and we will mimic your characteristics uh your way of saying to that particular uh, speaker and then uh, put it in the video itself so that is how it will be solved great thank you that probably answers my question yeah. as well uh, the second part of the question was uh, like while training and while working with this uh, and this is an open question to anyone who's also working in this kind of a, a setup uh, do you believe that or do you think that it was easy to have a text to speech for certain languages over others so for instance uh, in english we sometimes have uh, pronunciations which are very different for like similar looking words like for go it is go and for do yes. it is do yes although like you know it might seem like you know the intuitive thing is that uh, o is following d and you, you, it, it should be said in a certain way yep. but uh, as opposed to hindi or sanskrit which is said exactly the way it is written because we don't have any other way of like you know, we don't have exceptions per se so uh, is it easier to do that kind of a translation uh, like text to uh, text to speech translation over certain languages over others so uh, i would say that uh, it actually depends a lot of data right uh, why we went ahead with english over any other language for our first trial was for the reason that a lot of open source data set is actually present in english and you have a uh, different type of phonemes particularly present for that so while you are training that data you have a lot of data sets and as i mentioned you have to take out that phonemes particularly and then train that okay this is how it particularly sounds like 
Similarly, you have uh, the same thing for Hindi and Sanskrit as well, right? That you have phonemes whenever we are saying something. So uh, whenever the model is training, the model which we are training at the back end right now is uh, doing that only. We are passing on particular phonemes on that, that this particular speech contains this, these phonemes and it is getting trained on that. Now, uh, with pronunciation part, when it is coming up, uh, you can actually, uh, means uh, from the, uh, I'll give you an example of nature and mature, right? Uh, it, that's the most simple one uh, which I can think of right now. So uh, in that, if let's say if mature, it is coming as mature. So uh, there is a pronunciation methodology that you can actually give that, okay, this is how it needs to be pronounced. You can give it to your system and then the characteristic change of the uh, speech. So it becomes mature rather than major. So this same thing can be replicated in different languages as well. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Hi. Uh, bye bye. It's me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's lovely work, <laughs> amazing. Um, so I had a bit of a technical question. Um, so I, I mean, you did show a lot of uh, spectrograms, right? The yes. Fourier uh, yeah. analysis part. So does that get used in training as well, or do you use it mainly to visualize and understand how it looks after? So uh, actually, all the training is happening using the MEL spectrograms only. So the way it is happening is. Uh, if I just go very, very basic on this particular part, whenever you are doing uh, a speech uh, to your machine, a speech has no significance, right? Uh, generally, our models are trained on, let's talk, take an example of convolutional neural networks, right? It's image-based. Uh, you can do 1D, but it's majorly image-based. So whenever you are training, you have to give a lot of spectrograms that this particular speech has this spectrogram, take out features from this particular spectrogram, attach it with the phonemes which, have, which, which we have given it, uh, which we have given to the systems, and then train. Then look, okay, how a thing looks like. So you generate a lot of a spectrogram, and then you generate a speech on uh, top of that. So spectrograms can be changed into uh, digital signals so that the wave file can be generated which sounds like human. Good. And so the second part to it was, uh, so the LSTM things, do they work at the time domain or they can work at the, uh, you know, the spectrogram level? So LSTM uh, is required because uh, for the referencing point of view, you need LSTMs on that. But now we have like attention. So that is a bit more uh, better on that particular asset because you know how the particular sentence has been said. And so you can modulate it accordingly. Okay. So finally, as inputs, you're still giving um, the time domain signal along with the frequency domain. So for inference, we are just giving an uh, MP3 file, and okay. it is just take, giving us back an MP3 file. Okay. So the cloning yeah, part. The cloning part. It it is uh, one shot, so zero shot. You give it, you'll get the return in within a uh, few milliseconds. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi, Vibhur. Um, yeah. Great presentation. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, I I think emotion is multi-dimensional. You spoke yes. about intonation, and you spoke about volume modulation, leaving pauses yeah. and all of that. But have you considered the fact that even words contain info, uh, emotion? Yes. In that, to give you an example, right? Uh, in English, you have this phrase of comparing apples to oranges. Yes. In some other language, it might be comparing apples to pears. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, would, would those things also add to this whole emotion thing? Are you considering so, it in your... Yeah, so uh, we can take it in uh, a particular manner. Means, uh, let's say you are shouting in English. Right. Uh, English in general is a compressed language as compared to, let's say, Hindi. So a three-second sentence in English can become a five-second sentence in Hindi when you are uh, translating it. Now, first thing which you need to focus on is that your translation needs to be within three seconds. So let's say when a, a movie is getting dubbed into multiple languages, the translators make sure that, okay, it is in a particular frame only and the translation is accor according to that particular aspect. Now, uh, let's say in your anger, you had an active voice in past, uh, in English and your anger was on a word, let's say, cricket, right? On the other hand, when you are dub dubbing it in uh, Hindi, cricket can come first and then the other word can uh, be in the second part where the anger was there. So then that particular part would become angry. Now here the aspect of the linguist will come into picture that how they are framing that particular sentence so that uh, the emotion, because ultimately it has to be with a video. So the, uh, with the video, it is particularly attached. That anger is shown at that particular time frame only. So uh, the words will remain. Uh, so coming to the second point. So uh, like you're saying, uh, oranges can become peers in uh, a different language. So uh, orange is like 0 0.3 seconds and 
peer is 0.2 second. So while peer is getting uh, is spoken out, peer will also become 3, 0.3 second. It will become pair, something like a slower version, but with a louder voice. So it will become something like that. Okay. Uh I'm just asking, are you also working along those directions? Yeah, so uh, it basically, uh, these kind of things are automatically taken care of because if you are able to uh, uh, clone that particular emotion itself, uh, it is automatically uh, taken care of. Okay, so it's, it's not something that you explicitly... That we don't have to do explicitly. Okay, thank you. Hello, I have a question here, yeah. uh, over here. Yeah. Uh, also, thank you for your presentation and you just said uh, shouting in English and I was thinking, ah, like is that English or a language? <laughs> That's an expression. That is an expression. Maybe laughing is different in different languages. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking, I have a voice and it's pretty relatable to me and uh, it has a lot of emotions and stuff and maybe I can uh, reach out to uh, you as a company to use my voice in some things and um, perhaps uh, if Shah Rukh Khan was in the audience, maybe he'd be happy or upset about this. Yes. So uh, if from your perspective in building a business out of this, what do you see as the opportunities and challenges of protecting like my voice or my identity, whether it's with working with or without uh, such yeah, business? Uh, so, uh there always, uh, with any technology, there has to be the responsible aspect uh, attached to it, right? And with all the generative AI on the deep fakes which are uh, getting popular, there needs to be some form of uh, uh, privacy uh, and uh, safety that needs to be maintained. Uh, so here, what we are doing in the back end, we are putting one signature that this particular voice is created by our thing. So if we look into the signature itself, we can find that, okay, this particular voice is created by Fury. And uh, the other aspect is we can uh, create our systems. Uh, uh, so first is policies, that the kind of policy which we have, you can only upload your data. That is why we don't uh, allow uh, YouTube links to be uploaded on our platform. Uh, you have to upload that data. So that gives one form of uh, a guarantee that, okay, it is yours. Uh, second thing is we can take, take down that uh, content if that is reported that it is generated via our platform and it is someone else's voice. So those things we need to maintain. Cool. Thank, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.